no reason why I can't come along. I know the sound. Ah! Whose voice is that? Carrie Elway suddenly transformed into Clay Aiken. Like every tree stands on its own. Uh, wait. How can the plants move? What? What? The leaves are flying? What is this? This is Camelot, not fucking Fern Golly. How the fuck are they able to do this? Reaching for the sky, I stand alone. I'm sorry, this just really irritates me. Why do the plants fucking move? You're not writing Lord of the Rings, you can't just make up your own theology. This one already exists. If you're gonna have plants move, you have to have a reason for it. Explain, movie! Explain! <laughs> I just need your help this once. All right, all right. But you, but you just sung a friggin' song about why she can't come with you, and then all of a sudden she can. I really want to come with you. No. Like every tree stand Please. Oh, all right. But the comedic axe chicken. God, I can't believe I just put those words together. Tell Ruber about Kaylee's escape. You report. Well, the plot makes no sense, we have no originality, and the songs are gonna be more successful than the actual movie. You wretched mythological moron! Who knows where Excalibur is? Oh, by the way, did I mention that the chicken is played by Jaleel White? Doesn't that make him just so much more likable? But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. So just when you think the beaker of annoyance can't possibly be filled anymore, guess what else they toss our way? A double dragon. God, I wish. No, this is a funny two-headed dragon voiced by Eric Idle and Don Rickles. Together at last! Camelot? The restaurants? The theaters? The waitresses? The actresses? Are they funny? No. But they do love to sing obnoxious songs that just pop the hell out of nowhere. I'd be rocking with the dino. Swing it with the rhino. I'd be dragon eyes as cave. Oh, hey! This is like that thing Robin Williams did in Aladdin with the comedic references to modern day elements that won't exist for hundreds of years, except when he did it, it was mildly annoying, and when you do it, it's torturously annoying. Yeah, where does Elvis fit into the Arthur legend exactly, huh? You never sung before, have you? You don't need him, honey. So, what, we're just gonna move forward like nothing happened? Those two dragons just sung a three minute song and you're not even going to acknowledge it? These songs have no purpose! They're like drive-by musicals! If you want to have singing, fine, but make sure they have a point! Or are, you know, fucking entertaining! How about holding your breath? So Rubar, oh, I'm sorry, Ruber, catches up with our heroes and attacks them. Get down! But they all escape as Kaylee gets Garrett somewhere safe to mend his wounds. I'm sorry. Look at the sky. Oh, shut up! Does everybody have to sing in this movie? Look at him. It actually looks like it's hurting as he sings. Why would you sing if you're in pain? Are you afraid a town scout's gonna drop by on your deathbed? I hear your heartbeat just go for love. And suddenly I know why love Wait, wait. No. No. You can't get away with that movie. You need some explanation. How did a leaf evaporate into his skin and just magically cure it? No! No! That does not happen, movie! That just does not happen! Unless you, oh, I don't know, explain! So after the healing touch of leaves, they make it to the cave where Excalibur is. And it turns out it's being held by... a rock biter. A rock biter? A rock biter. For God's sakes, you're not even trying. First you rip off Belle, and now you gotta rip off the rock biter from NeverEnding Story. This is just painful! Rock biter, what were you thinking? It looked like a good, strong script, didn't it? The bad guys enter as well, but luckily our heroes get Excalibur before they can touch it. The ogre's butt. Did he just say the ogre's butt? The ogre's butt. 
Okay, that's not a sentence, that's a noun. That's not even a good noun. In fact, this is where Gary Oldman should have known this movie was going to suck, when he had to just say the line, the ogre's butt. Gentlemen, I, I want to talk to you about this line. Which is that? The ogre's butt. What about it? Is... Is that it? It's simply the ogre's butt? Yeah, it's an ogre's butt. What's wrong with an ogre's butt? Oh, nothing. I have nothing against the ogre's butt. I'm sure the ogre's butt is lovely. However, there doesn't seem to be any reason for the ogre's butt. How about perhaps a uh, verb or predicate clause like... Look out for the ogre's butt, or, oh no, we are under the ogre's butt, or, if you'll permit me, woe is me and all others who are trapped under ogre's butt. This is, this is. Yeah, ogre's butt is in plural. Duly noted. But at least that one came with a conjunction. Grammatically speaking, I think that makes the ogre's butt much more palatable. Look, just stick to the script. But I ask you, how does it make any sense? I'm a Shakespearean trained actor. Hey, weren't you that spider in Lost in Space? Bogus butt it is. Get the work, puppet. Uh...